you live on this life for a few years, and then death can be such a long, long time. And so I like to encourage people to be concerned about their afterlife, because they're going to be there. We're going to be there so much longer. Well, I told you there was a, a little connection between the festival of tabernacles and the life of Abraham and Sarah, specifically because they lived in tents, tabernacles. Biblical significance to that lifestyle. Listen to this from the book of Hebrews 11. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he'd later receive as, an, as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with the foundations whose architect and builder is God. You know, Abraham didn't mind living in a tent because he knew it was temporary. He said, okay, I'm going to a better city. I've got a mansion waiting for me. I can live in tent for a while. It's no big deal. Somebody was telling me about their trip to, I don't remember if they were in Saudi Arabia, one of those places. And they said, out in the middle of the desert was a Bedouin tent. Next to it was a Mercedes, a satellite dish, and a bunch of camels. You know, I thought about that. If you can afford a Mercedes, can't you afford a house? Sure, but why buy one if you're used to a tent? And there's some benefits to living in a tent. There's lots of benefits living into a tent. You know, if your house burns down, that's a big problem. If your tent burns down, pfft, so? Put up another one. You see what I'm saying? There's, there's, there's advantages to having a tent. All these houses that were destroyed during Katrina, many of them without flood insurance, big problem. What if they all lived in tents? No problem. Just pitch another one. Let it dry out. Put up another one. There are some benefits to living in a tent. A tent, though, means, did for Abraham, does for us, that it's temporary. You just put it up for a short stay. And so Abraham lived in a tent looking forward to a city whose builder and architect is God. He was patient. He could wait. For an instance, let me give you this. You might say, man, I couldn't live in a tent for 50 years. huh?" Let's say you got a phone call. Somebody says, Bill Gates has found your name in a book. And he threw a dart at the book and your name came up. And he wants to give you $100 billion. I need you to come to my office in D.C., It'll take anywhere from an hour to a week to get the paperwork in order, and we will give you a check for $100 billion. So you go to D.C. or wherever the check's waiting for you, and you got to wait. Now, how many of you are uptight that you're waiting? I'm like, I'll wait a week. I'll wait two weeks. I'll wait a month. Heck, I'll wait a year. Because we know what's coming is worth it. The wait is not a problem when the thing you're waiting for is awesome. It says in the Bible, when Jacob worked seven years to earn his wife, the seven years fl flew by like a moment for the love he had for her. When you're waiting for something you can't wait to get, it's worth it, baby, let me tell you. Abraham's faith was so powerful, he gave up his house like that. I'll live in a tent. I got something much better coming. Abraham knew he was just passing through. So let me ask you a question. You just passing through? Do you live in a tent? I don't mean literally, though you could. I mean, how attached are you to your house and your satellite dish and your Mercedes? You're saying, I wish. <laughs> Hebrews 11. All these people, all the believers of the past, the patriarchs, were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they're looking for a country of their own. Instead, next verse, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. 
Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God because he has prepared a city for them. Why is God not ashamed to be called their God? Because they're looking forward to the city he built for them. And that just pleases God. That's faith. All right, I'll live in a tent. Whatever you got for me, God, is fine by me. You all know this because I told you a hundred times. I like the beach. And second to the beach, I like the forest. So, of course, I live in the desert. I hate the desert. I've lived in the desert longer than I've lived anywhere in my life. Why? Because God put me here, and I know I'm supposed to be here. Dang it. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I'm just here for a little while. I'm, I got some work to do, and then I'll pass through. You know? It's okay. Abraham lived in a tent, and he lived in a tent happily because he was not home yet. That's all. One of my favorite passages in Scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples. And I got one translation up here for you, but the one I remember said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, not tents. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Fill in your name right there. Bill Gates, at the office with your check. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and bring you to me. That where I am, you may be also. Jesus says, I'm going to build you a city and a house. Can you imagine the type of house Jesus could build? <laughs> the God of the universe and human flesh who happened to have a job as either a stonemason or a carpenter. We're not sure which. He knows about building. It's kind of funny. Why did he have that job? You could say he could have been a shepherd, right? That would have made some cool biblical connections if he was a shepherd. But he wasn't. He was a builder. And it's kind of like, is it like he knew this stuff? It's kind of like, yeah, I'll go down there as a builder. And I'll get a little hands on practice so that when I go to heaven, I can really build them something special. Jesus himself might have worked on some of the grandest cities in the Middle East during the days that he was there. Because one of the Herods who lived during the days that Jesus lived was building this beautiful capital city right next to Nazareth. There's a good chance that Jesus and Joseph were employed to work on that city. He knew about the layout of the streets. Pretty cool stuff, if you ask me. Well, Abraham lived in a tent because he wasn't home yet. He knew he was just passing through. There was a, a missionary who moved to Portugal. And he ministered in Portugal for 50 years. But he was there during World War II. And his friends and his advisors and the mission society said, listen, it's too dangerous for you to be deployed and with your family in Portugal during World War II. You need to get everybody back home where it's safe. And I'm thinking, safe? Didn't, don't they know what I know? <laughs> All those bombs dropping and stuff? So anyway, his, his, his sister and her three children and his wife and their eight children all got in a boat to go home. Some time passes. Sunday morning, he's ready to preach a message. And before he gets up, he says, I've got some good news. I've just gotten word that my family has arrived safely home. And I'm sure everybody did whatever they did to show their appreciation in those days. And then he got on with the message. After the message, some people started hearing the full story. The boat was sunk and everybody on board died. You said they were safely home. Did you lie? No. For the first time in their lives, they are safely home. He knew that. I'm sure he was sad he wasn't going to see them again right away. But no more sorrow where they went. No more suffering. All good. Safely home. So Abraham and Sarah lived in tents. And it represented how temporal life really is this side of the Golden Gates. But the Bible not only shows us that tents, living places, are indicative or they illustrate temporary life. Not only do we live in tents, but we are tents. Listen to this from 2 Corinthians 5. We know that when this tent we live in, our body here on earth is torn down, 
God will have a house in heaven for us to live in. A home he himself has made which will last forever. And verse 4. While we live in this earthly tent, we groan with a feeling of oppression. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. 